Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 16th annual Golden Goggle Awards here at the JW Marriott at LA Live. We're glad you've joined us for our star-studded lineup of celebrities, swimming legends, and the biggest names in the sport today. Tonight, you'll see Amanda Beard, Tracy Austin, Linda Cohn, Rowdy Gaines, Greg Gehrman, Lenny Kraselberg, Debbie Meyer, Karen Moe, John Neighbor, Megan Kwan Jendrick, Ted Robinson, Caitlin Sandino, Maya and Alex Shibatani, Mark Spitz, Jenny Thompson, and Casey Wasserman. And now, please welcome to the stage British recording artist Thomas Spencer. Hello. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome USA Swimming's 2019 World Championships team. And here they are, our team support, John Alm, Larry Boondorf, Jessica Cooper, Brian Cunningham, Alex Dawson, Tad Crimmon, Matt Lowe, Jim Lynch, Katie McCloskey, Lauren McGill, Amy Murray, and Lauren Whittington. And now our coaches, Arthur Albiero, Dave Durden, Catherine Case, Dave Kelsheimer, Ray Luz, Terry McKeever, Greg Meehan, John Payne, Bill Rose, Greg Troy, and John Urbanchak. And now our amazing athletes, Nathan Adrian, Michael Andrew, Zach Apple, Kathleen Baker, Michael Brinegar, Katie Campbell, Michael Chadwick, Mallory Comerford, Kelsey Dahlia, Katie Draybot, Caleb Dressel, Ella Easton, Haley Flickener, Brooke Forty, Brennan Gravely, Zane Grothy, Zach Harding, David Heron, Chase Kalish, Lily King, Katie Ledecky, Jack Levant, Jay Litherland, Simone Manuel, Melanie Margalis, Katie McLaughlin, Ryan Murphy, Jacob Pebley, Blake Peroni, Grant Schultz, Leah Smith, Reagan Smith, Olivia Smoliga, Erica Sullivan, Abby 
Weitzel. Andrew Wilson. And Justin Wright. And finally, your first three 2020 Olympians. At the World Champs, these three open water athletes qualified for the Tokyo Games next summer. They are Haley Anderson, Ashley Twitchell, and Jordan Wilamowski. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2019 World Championships team, welcome to the sixth annual Golden Goggle Awards. And now please welcome the master of ceremonies of our show. He has appeared on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, on Conan O'Brien, and will be in the upcoming film here today alongside Billy Crystal and Tiffany Haddish. Please welcome the incredible Matthew Broussard. Hi, everybody. Wow. 2019 Golden Goggle Awards. This is so great. Let's hear, first of all, for the voice you just heard for Rowdy Gaines. Let's hear for Rowdy Gaines. If you could go back in time and tell 15 year old me he was going to get to hear his name yelled by Rowdy Gaines, you're like, wow, I get to be a successful swimmer? Like, no, not even close. Not even a little bit. I was really hoping that, you know, maybe when he called my name, I was just going to not walk out here so I could hear him go, I don't think he's going to make it. I don't think he can do it. They're neck and neck. It's <laughs> my rowdy impression. All right. Let's hear it for the national team. Let's hear it for them. Swimmers, such a fan. Congratulations to all the men on the team for being able to find a suit that fits you. I can't imagine how hard that is. Short sleeve length NBA, waist size pre-K. Not an easy job. <laughs> Now, a lot of you might be wondering who I am. I am the best USA swimming could afford in a non-Olympic year. So, if, if y'all do well in Tokyo, you can have Anders again, okay? You gotta do well, though. I am, I am a former swimmer myself. Uh, in 2011, I was top 10 in the country for the 1,500 short course meters, masters ages 18, 18 through 24, because only seven people competed that year. Not to stun on y'all like that. Big fan of the sport. I was actually equipment manager of the swim team at Rice University. Let's hear it for Rice. So this is, uh, this is big. This is the honor of, of my lifetime to stand up in front of my heroes and roast you all. This is great. I, you're crazy people, swimmers. You're cra you pick the only sport where you can lose your scholarship for breathing too much. That's, that's it. You wake up at 5 a.m. to practice drowning. This is not a fun life. Obviously, I want to talk about you know, some specific swimmers. You can't, you can't talk about swimming without talking about the GOAT, Michael Phelps, obviously. Not just an amazing swimmer. He also coined the term OK Boomer while pretending to listen to his son. I was like, OK Boomer, yeah, dad's playing Xbox. Y'all didn't laugh. OK, here's what you need to know for that joke. Michael Phelps has three sons named Boomer, Maverick, and Beckett. So he's won 23 Olympic gold medals and two out of three games of rock, paper, scissors over who gets to name the kid. That's what clearly, I just hope the next one named Iceman. That's what I'm really hoping for. Uh, obviously, I would like Ryan Lochte, another big name in swimming. I'm a, a big, big fan. Ryan Lochte, the Michael Phelps of people who aren't Michael Phelps. Wow, what a legend. I'm a really big fan. This is like a really cool moment for me. There's so many jokes I can do in this room that I can't do in it. Can I do one really bad one for you all right now? Okay, what's Ryan Lochte's favorite kind of seed? Chia! <laughs> Cullen better have laughed at that one. Okay, good. Great, this is, uh, what, what a great year it's been for the USA swim team. What a great team we have. It's a great mixture of old and new. Uh, we, we have obviously veteran Nathan Adrian, the bell of the ball. It's so great that he is here. He, he's back competing, even shed a little bit of weight. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, I, could, I see why that's a testy subject. I won't do any more jokes on that. <laughs> ah, he's great though, I love you, Nathan. Uh, we have newcomer Reagan Smith, 17 years old. She broke two world records this year and 
was finally allowed to see R-rated movies in theaters. What a big year for Reagan. Hope you can finish that algebra homework tonight. Oh, man. Uh, we have uh, Simone Manuel at World Champs, proved herself to be the ultimate money swimmer with an outside smoke performance from lane one in the 100 freestyle. Let's hear it for that. What a great, what a great race that was. Lily King continues to dominate the breaststroke races. Uh, a pair of individual golds at Worlds this year. Lily, I'm a big fan. It's always so fun watching you defeat Ivan Drago. That's just, that's great for me. Uh, and obviously the strongest female freestyler of all time. Uh, Katie Ledecky won her fourth consecutive world title in the 800 free on a sick day. She did it sick. Let's hear it for that. That's incredible. She was on the, on the podium with a medal in one hand and a doctor's note in the other. That's unbelievable. Now, if you will all look down at your programs, you might notice that we have a very tight race tonight for uh, male athlete of the year. I don't, I mean, is it gonna be Caleb Dressel? Maybe Caleb Dressel? Or is it Dark Horse Caleb Dressel? I don't know. It's Dresselmania tonight. It's gonna be exciting. I'm gonna do something unorthodox. I'd like to award my own award uh, of the night. I would like to give the Comeback of the Year award to Caleb Dressel's shoulder tattoo. <laughs> no one, they said that wasn't gonna work. He used to have a shoulder tattoo and then he didn't, now he, he, he has it again. Okay, the phoenix has risen. Uh, I'd also like to, 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 my favorite swimmer I would like to acknowledge, my, my, my favorite swimmer of all time is here, uh, my girlfriend, the reason I'm here, Laura Sogar. Let's hear her first. She's a uh, national champion, medalist of worlds, also my roommate. Uh, we, she, we met because I was a, a huge fan. We met because I sent her a message on Instagram. You know, got to go for it. Carpe diem. That's Latin for, what do you, yeah? Seize the diem. That's right. That's where that comes from. And she's, she's wonderful, she's great, she was, she was a great athlete. I'm not a great athlete, I'm very bad. Like, I don't even like those champion t-shirts. Like, I wish it just said participant, like that'd be a little more race for you. My girlfriend was so good, she was such a good athlete, and she's, you know, retired now and adjusting to life on land. You know, it's good, she's got, she's growing her eyebrows back, they're almost there. <laughs> and uh, it's great, we, uh, she's, we're similar in size. That's been a tricky thing about dating a swimmer because you know she's she's tall and you know muscular, still very feminine. You know, skinny waist, broad, childbearing shoulders. I, you know, <laughs> I feel safe in her arms. She's also German, half German. Germans make great swimmers if you don't know. They're tall and they have very strong upper bodies from holding up the European Union. It gives them this great. <laughs> uh. But she's uh, it's 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 fun. We're, we're you know like I said, we're similar in size. And the the, the thing you, you lose some things with that. Like a thing a lot of uh, men like to do is you give your girlfriend your shirt to sleep in and it fits her very baggy and billowy and that makes you feel very manly and protective and when my girlfriend puts on one of my shirts it's just like ah that's how that should fit yeah that is mwah. yeah that is your participant shirt you keep that and she swam her whole life so she started swimming when she was five like I'm sure all the swimmers in here did so all of her boyfriends before me were really good swimmers. Like her last boyfriend was a sprinter, 50 freestyle, 100 freestyle, a little bit of butterfly and some backstroke too. And he went to like collegiate nationals. He had Olympic trials cuts. I only Googled him for a few hours, but a very speedy guy <laughs> from what I could sleuth up. And fun fact about this guy, six foot seven. Six foot seven. My girlfriend's ex boyfriend is a six foot seven elite swimmer. And that used to mess with my self-esteem, but the really cool part about that is that we can just sleep in his old shirts. It's great, it's very spacious. Comes down to about here, a uh, high room, like a sundress. It's good, I do, I, like, being, dating a swimmer, I also, I, I learned that tall women have a unique struggle. I feel like they have a hard time, because I feel like our culture tries to make tall women feel bad about their bodies, but it's in very subtle ways. Like a good example is my girlfriend's feet are size 11, but women's shoe stores typically don't carry above size 10, so she has to buy all of her shoes online on a website called, how mean is this? Amazon.com. Like that's rude, right? <laughs> Thank you. That joke's all about delivery. <laughs> if you don't get it, you will in two to three days. <laughs> You'll get that. <laughs> We'll get that delivery. Uh, again, thank you, that's, that's my little monologue. I, it's just, I, I'm such a fan. I, I've, I've watched this ceremony for all these years now and being here in person, it really does smell like chlorine. Wow, I've never felt 
shorter in my life. Well, let's take a look, everyone. Let's please enjoy, uh, let's take a look at Team USA's year in the pool. Here comes Simone Manuel. It looks like she's going to win gold from lane one. Indeed, she will. Oh! Never doubt her, huh? Fastest woman in the world. You bet. This is unbelievable. Smith is going to shatter Missy Franklin's mark. Is it? This is the new star. I was definitely in shock. Jay Litherland is gaining on Diaceto. What a gutsy performance by this young man. And it's Murphy with the silver and a national title for Abby Weitzel in the 100 free. Silver, Draybot with a bronze. Full second lead in 46 8. Zach Apple. Nathan Adrian finding something in the U.S. takes gold. Oh, yes. Full body length lead. The U.S. women and Simone Manuel. Closes to the wall, world record swim. Trying to hold on up there. Maliga, it's Maliga. What a race for Olivia. How about that? Kalish does get the bronze. It's Allison Schmidt. Yes! A national champion here at Stanford. Allie McHugh, the national champion in the women's 800 free. Leah Smith in bronze medal position with a wonderful comeback. But look at Ledecky explode off the wall. There she goes. I'm not feeling well, but I'm still Katie Ledecky with the heart of a champion gets it done. And this time, Caleb Dressel gets under it. Regan Smith pulls away the field in the women's 200 back. Swimmers have a chance as they come to the wall. It's Manuel once again. He's got about a body length lead on Minikoff, and Caleb Dressel is on a roll. Four golds, three silvers, the only swimmer to ever win eight medals at a single world championships. U.S. set nine American records, five world records this week. Here with us to introduce the first award of the evening, he was one of the most dominant swimmers of his day. At the 1976 Montreal Games, this USC Trojan was unbeatable on his back, claiming gold in both the 100 and 200 backstrokes in world record time. Joining him, a fixture on ESPN for over a quarter century, she's hosted sports centers, uh, more sports centers than, uh, than anyone else, and was named one of the 25 most influential women in sports. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome five-time Olympic medalist John Neighbor and the anchor of ESPN Sports Center, Linda Cohn. I've been watching, well, you have, 
Well, I've been, uh, yes, <laughs> it's my line. And I, we've been watching Sports Center for decades, and I feel like the genius of the show is that it captures those moments that make us all love sports. Oh, that's true, John, absolutely. I mean, that's what it's all about. Let's face it, on a daily basis, we may witness greatness in any number of ways, from football fields to basketball courts uh, to hockey rinks, which is what I know for sure, and of course, what all you know, swimming pools. I love them, I love them, and I, for one, can never get enough of these kind of moments. And here are five Sports Center worthy swims like that it. we witnessed in 2019. Nicely done. Uh, first, there is Simone Manuel at the World Champs in South Korea. Of course, she pulled off the outside smoke, winning the 100 freestyle from lane one in American record time. Next, there's the great Katie Ledecky, a four-time winner of this award, and at the World Championships, she battled illness, but it wasn't enough to keep her from gold for the fourth straight time in the 800-meter freestyle. Your next nominee is Olivia Smoliga in the 50 back at the World Champs. 25-year-old Smoliga claimed her first individual world title as she raced to gold and broke her own American record. And then the 17-year-old Reagan Smith. At the World Championships, this girl announced her arrival in a big way in the semifinals of the 200 backstroke. She stunned herself as she shattered Missy Franklin's world record. Your fifth and final nominee is, of course, Lily King, who always brings her A-game to the biggest stage. At the World Champs, she stepped up once more, racing to hard-fought gold in the 100 breaststroke. So let's refresh. Simone Manuel, Katie Ledecky, Olivia Smoliga, Reagan Smith, and Lily King, your nominees for the 2019 Female Race of the Year. Simone Manuel once again proved her race toughness by taking gold and breaking the American record in the 100 meter freestyle in Guangzhou. Here comes Simone Manuel. It looks like she's going to win gold from lane one. Indeed, she will. Oh, never doubt her, huh? Katie Ledecky pulled ahead of the field in the final 50 meters to win gold in the 800 freestyle for the fourth straight time at the world. Wow, did you see that? is on her way to her fourth 800 free title in a row. Earning her first individual world championships gold medal, Olivia Smoliga blitzed the field in the 50 backstroke with an American record. Trying to hold on up there. It's Smoliga! Smoliga! What a race for Olivia! And it's a new American record. Regan Smith obliterated the world record in the 200 backstroke in South Korea and went on to win the gold medal by nearly three seconds. This is unbelievable. Smith is going to shatter Missy Franklin's mark. Get the end. This is the new star. For the third time in three years, Lily King won a head to head duel over her Russian rival in the 100 breaststroke at the World Championships. Head to head, neck to neck. Is going to do it again against her Russian rival. Don't they all deserve a round for that? Yes. Are we ready? Let's do it. And the winner is for Female Race of the Year, Reagan Smith. The this is unbelievable. Smith is going to shatter Missy Franklin's mark. excited to be up here. Um, I just, I really want to first thank USA Swimming and the USA Swimming Foundation for putting on this great show. Um, I've been looking forward to this for a long time and yeah, it, it's really great to be up here right now. Um, I also really want to thank my parents. I'm really glad that they could both be here tonight and it means so much to me. So 
Thank you, my parents, for all that you do. I love you both. And um, I lastly just want to thank my coach, Mike Parado, who's also here tonight, and I'm so thankful for that. He just, he means the world to me. He does so much for me. He does everything. I just go out there and swim. He prepares everything. He's, he's the man behind it all. So thank you, Mike. Thank you to my parents, and thank you to USA Swimming. One more time for Reagan Smith, everybody. Let's hear it for Reagan. What an incredible athlete performance. I think we're going to see a lot of cool stuff from her in the future. Uh, up next, the golden goggles uh, for male race of the year. Last year at the 2018 Winter, Winter Olympics in South Korea, these siblings stole, I can't say words right, huh? These siblings stole the show. They became the first ice dancers, both of Asian descent, to earn an Olympic medal. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome two-time Olympic bronze medalist, the Shib Sibs, Maya and Alex Shibutani. Go. Thank you. Yeah. There's nothing quite. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Are you good? Can I continue? Wait. Okay, I'm good. Okay. He's set. He's ready. There's nothing quite like representing Team USA in international competition. It's an honor that never gets old, and one that comes with great responsibility. Each year, at seemingly every major event, it's the swimmers of Team USA who always set the standard for excellence on the world stage. Your first nominee for Male Race of the Year is 23-year-old Caleb Dressel. At the World Championships in South Korea, Dressel was ubiquitous. In the 50 freestyle, he torched the field and broke his own American record. The next nominee is also Caleb Dressel, this time for his performance in the 100 free at the World Champs, where he also broke his American record and became the first US man to crack 47 seconds. Keeping with the theme, <laughs> another nod to Mr. Dressel for his first gold medal of the World Championships in the 50 butterfly, where he set, yes, another American record. Okay, one more time. It's enough already. It's Caleb Dressel again. At the World Champs, his 100 butterfly may have been best of all as he smashed Michael Phelps' world record in the semifinal. Your fifth and final nominee is not named Caleb Dressel. It's 23 year old Jay Litherland who earned his nomination with a stunning silver medal performance in the 400 IM. Caleb Dressel. Caleb Dressel, Caleb Dressel, Caleb Dressel, and Jay Litherland, the nominees for Male Race of the Year. Caleb Dressel snapped his own American record on his way to winning the gold medal in the 50 meter freestyle in Guangzhou. Caleb Dressel wins it. Another American record for Dressel. In a nail biting finish decided by just 12 one hundredths of a second, Caleb Dressel edged Australian Kyle Chalmers for the gold medal in the 100 freestyle. Dressel trying to hang on. Here comes Chalmers below him, but Dressel is going to outlast him. Caleb Dressel won his first of four individual gold medals in Guangzhou by taking the 50 meter butterfly with an American record. And now yes! Caleb Dressel sets a new American mark as well. Oh! Nabbing his first individual world record, Caleb Dressel shattered Michael Phelps' 100 meter butterfly mark at the World Championships. 49.82. Michael Phelps had his record go down. Jay Litherland came from over two seconds behind in the final 50 meters to earn a silver medal and nearly upset world champion Diaceto in the 400 IM. Jay Litherland is gaining on Diaceto. What a gutsy performance by this young man.
And the male race of the year goes to Caleb Dressel, men's 100 meter butterfly, 2019 world championship. Michael Phelps had his record go down earlier, and this time Caleb Dressel gets under it. Well, I'm really glad uh, 50 freestyle Caleb Dressel did not win that. Hate that guy. Um, <laughs> uh, no, this was, um, I know a lot of us just get to see the end results, but for all the swimmers out here, we know it does not come easy. Troy, you know, wherever you're at, you know more than anyone in this room how tough this past year was. I mean, a couple weeks before Worlds, I was crying after more than one practice a week just because how bad I was doing. I knew the pressure that was coming with it what I expected of myself. So it wasn't an easy year. Um, I mean, just the mental doubt I had leading up to Worlds. So it was nice to see it come together, but I would not be able to do this by myself. I mean, the support staff we have on USA Swimming. I don't like putting my body through six days of mental and physical torture. It's honestly what it is. The end result is really fun, but the highlight of this meet is just hanging out with my friends. So if I can leave you with something, just don't ever compare yourself to anyone. I'm not in this to beat one person in particular, which a lot of you can guess who I've been compared to. It's not me. I don't swim the same events. He's a much better swimmer. I'm not in this to beat anybody's medal count records. I just want to see how far I can take this. I'm just a kid from Green Cove who has no business taking it as far as I have. Um, I just want to see how far I can take it. So if I can leave you with that, just see how far you can take your potential and have fun while doing it. So. Thank you guys and go Team USA. Caleb Dressel, everybody. Caleb Dressel, Caleb Dressel, Caleb Dressel. Sounds like a future song. All right, let's hear it for Caleb Dressel, everyone. And for Jay. Just a, just a hunch, but I feel like you might be hearing his name a couple more times tonight. Don't want to. Jinx it, but uh, now we're going to break for dinner. Uh, before our evening's featured entertainment, we'll give them a few minutes to get set up here on the stage, so. And hello, everybody. Allow me to introduce to you an internationally acclaimed pop band hailing from Copenhagen, Denmark. They've topped the charts across the globe. Three-time Grammy nominees. Please join me in welcoming Lucas Graham. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for having us. We're going to start off with a little song. Well, hopefully a little song. John Sarson on guitar, you can start this one off. Please give me a redemption song, I need one real bad No one seems to thank them now, the John and Bob are dead, old I know it We need one right now, if life's another game of chess We lost a couple pieces, the ones who had a dream for us The legends who would lead us, old I know it we need them right now The darkness makes it hard to see the light But the time is always right to do what's right If you only knew I'm just as scared as you You're not the only one Is it? Ignorant to say that love is just no longer needed And childish to think that love gives life a higher meaning Old I know it We need love right now The people we have given trust end up corrupting button The 
start with great ideals, but on the way that's all forgotten, all I know is we need hope right now. The darkness makes it hard to see the light, but the time is always right to do what's right if you only know. Seems to write them now that John and Bob are dead. All I know is we need one right now. Switching up guitars. It's lovely being able to perform for a seated crowd for once in a while. And, uh, and it's lovely to be able to be a little closer to, to sports, especially swimming. Because where the country I'm from, it's, it's obligatory in primary school to, to go to swimming classes. Because, I mean, the ocean is quite treacherous where we're from. So everyone was swimming. My father taught us how to save lives while swimming. Knock them out first, otherwise they'll drown you, was what he said. Are you ready for this one? A little song to the missus, a little song to my daughter. There are days I wake up and I pinch myself. You're with me, not someone else. And I'm scared, yeah, I'm still scared that it's all a dream. When you love someone, you open up your heart. When you love someone, you make good. If you love someone and you're not afraid to lose them, you probably never love someone like I do. You probably never love someone like I do. When you say you love the way I make you feel, everything becomes so real. Don't be scared, no, don't be scared, cause you're Found 
do And I find it bittersweet Cause you gave me something to lose But when you love someone You open up your heart When you love someone You make a love If you love someone And you're not afraid to lose them You probably never love someone Like I do You probably never love someone Like I do You probably never love someone Like I do Thank you very much. I think you're going to be listening to enough talking tonight, so we're just going to slide right into the next one, if you're ready, Johnny. Almost. Almost ready. Damn guitarists, right? Can't you just shake your arms and start swimming? Come on. And Orange County is still tuning. Are you ready? Okay. I mean, San Jose over here has been ready for a while. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So much for supposed to be Girl, I wish you luck getting over me And supposedly You'll be pimbo, wish you were holding me You wish you were holding me Isn't it, isn't it something Whenever you touch it You don't feel nothing isn't it something how quickly your honesty just turns into make believe? It turns into make believe. call again Guess it didn't go how you imagined it I know what it is Yeah All that time with them you were born in this Yeah, you were born in this Isn't it? Isn't it something? How easy you fall in uh, Like it was not isn't it something how quickly you're meant to be? Just turned in a history. They turned in a history. I do believe a lot of the guys and girls in the room tonight who come up on stage weren't ex exactly expecting to be awarded for their talents in singing. And I don't, I don't think I was expecting to perform in the United States ever. I grew up in a house without a toilet, without a bathroom. I was born on a couch, the same couch my sisters were born on. 
And, um, and to be honest to you, I doubted myself a while. But I had parents that really believed in what I liked to do. Especially a mom who uh, would listen to all my choir practices and rehearse on the piano with me. And, um, and yeah, I think a lot of us wouldn't be in this room tonight if it wasn't for our fantastic mothers, ladies and gentlemen. I'm only saying it because my father's dead, so I can only really thank my mom now. But I mean, dads too have a part to play in all this. You ready, Mr. Maimon? You ready? As ready as you've ever been. <laughs> Give us a little four. Mama said that it was okay. Mama said that it was quite all right. That kind of people had a bad. Mama told us we were good kids And daddy told us never listen to the ones Point the nasty fingers and make it fun Cause we were good kids Remember asking both my mom and dad Why we never traveled to exotic lands We only ever really visit friends Nothing to tell when the summer ends Passing on that stuff in plenty laws New shoes once a year and then Out to play ball so we could ruin them When mama said that it was okay Mama said that it was quite alright Our kind of people had a bed for the night And it was okay Mama told us we were good kids And daddy told us now but listen to the ones the nasty fingers and making fun Cause we were good kids Don't get me wrong, I didn't have it bad I got enough loving from my mom and dad But I don't think they really understood When I said that I wanted to deal in Hollywood I told them I'd be singing on TV The other kids were calling me a wannabe The older kids, they started bugging me But now you're all sitting right in front of me And thank you my mama said that it was okay Mama said that it was quite all right Our kind of people had a bed for the night And it was okay Mama told us we were good kids And daddy told us never listen to the ones Point the nasty fingers and making fun Cause we were good kids I know which place I'm from That's where I go An old friend can give advice When old friends only know the half story That's why I always keep them tight And why I'm okay I said I'm okay You know what my mama said? You know what she told me? Before we play our final song of the night and allow you guys to uh, start eating some food, John Sarson on guitar, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> on guitars. And we got David Maimon on the piano. And we'll, uh... Can you start this one for us, Mr. Maimon, when uh, Johnny's ready for us? Are you? <laughs>
We want some big, big world, but we thought we were bigger. Pushing each other to the limits, we were learning quicker. By 11, smoking herb and drinking burning liquor. Never been so we were out to make that steady figure. Once I was 11 years old, my daddy told me, go get yourself a wife for you. writing songs, I started writing stories, something about this glory just always seems to fool me, cause only those I really love will ever really know me, once I was 20 years old, my story got told, before the morning sun when life was long, diggy. once I was 20 years old. see my goals i don't believe in failure because i know the smallest voices they can make it major i got my boys with me at least those in favor and if we don't meet before i leave i hope i'll see you later once i was 20 years old my story got told i was fighting about all the things i saw before me once i was 20 Songs have been sold, we've traveled around the world and we're still roaming. Soon we'll be 30 years old. Yeah, I wish. I'm still learning about life. My woman brought children for me. So I can sing them all my songs and I can tell them stories. Most of my boys are with me, some are still out seeking glory. Some I had to leave behind my brother, I'm still savvy Soon I'll be 60 years old, my daddy 61 Remember life and then your life becomes a bitter one I made a man so happy when I rode a little once I hope my children come and visit once or twice a month Soon I'll be 60 years old Will I think the world is cold or will I have a lot of children who can walk Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and have a There's no place that I would rather be than right here on this pool deck, and yet even more importantly in the water behind me. But for so many children, that's just not possible. And that's because drowning is an epidemic in our country. Yet we have found the cure. And I think the cure is pretty simple. It's swim lessons, because formal swim lessons reduces that risk of drowning by 88%. I get a Google alert on my phone every time a child drowns and I get three or four a day and it literally breaks my heart. But it's also an important reminder that I, along with my brothers and sisters at the USA Swimming Foundation and, and all of our Make a Splash partners across every single state in this country want to give every single child that opportunity for that life-saving gift of swim lessons. One day my tombstone will probably read Rowdy Gaines Das Swimmer, and I, I think I'm okay with that, but also I would want to be remembered as a good father and a good son, a good husband. But most importantly, I would like to think of myself as somebody that made a difference in preventing drowning for our children, our children. Water is part of the fabric of who I am and my family. And I want to give that gift as, 
as many children as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, five-time Olympic champion, Nathan Andrian. Rowdy Gaines, everyone. It doesn't get more heartfelt than that. Thank you, Rowdy, for that powerful reminder of why we're all gathered here this evening. I'm Nathan Adrian, and I hope all of you are having a great time tonight. I love being here for this special night. It's crazy to think that this is actually my 11th Golden Goggles. Yeah. I attended my first one as an 18-year-old member of the national team back in 2008. And for the last four years, it's been an honor to be ambassador of the USA Swing Foundation, helping to promote the amazing work that it does. The foundation is guided by dual missions, saving lives and building champions. I look at that as the two pillars of our sport, where the journey begins, learning how to be safer in the water, and then taking that journey with the goal of someday becoming a champion. Now I'm going to invite Rowdy up here to join me to share a bit more about the foundation and our tireless commitment to these missions. Thank you, Nathan. It's been such a pleasure to have you on board working with us throughout these years. And folks, as you probably saw in the video, this is something that brings out a lot of emotion in me because I couldn't be more passionate about it. It, it can seem like such a small thing, such a simple thing, learning to swim. We all kind of take it for granted. And that might be something that a lot of us in this room just assume is natural. However, for far too many, it's not a given. Drowning remains an epidemic in our country. And as I mentioned in the video, formal swim lessons reduces that risk of drowning by 88%. That's why the foundation is devoted to spreading access to swim lessons as much as we possibly can. Now, in 2019, we continued to witness some remarkable milestones. This year, we awarded over $600,000 to swim lesson providers across the country. And the foundation gave over $1 million to our national team. This reflects our commitment to the spectrum of our sport as we seek to support the complete swimming journey from swim lessons at the earliest stage to the top of the podium. Saving lives and building champions, that's what we're all about. So that's why we gather each year at this amazing, wonderful ga gala. Now, before we get on with the awards, it's time for a relatively new tradition of our show, the live auction. So the last couple years, it's been a blast with some very cool items up for bid, and we think we've outdone ourselves this year. So to lead our live auction bidding once again, he's a fast-talking friend of USA Swimming. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mike Shimard. All right. Rowdy, Nathan, how you guys doing? You guys ready to raise a little money right now? Now, are you guys ready to raise a little money right now? All right. So me and Rowdy were talking in the back, and we're like, let's do something a little different this year, something that's going to put our audience on their toes. So looking out into this room, you guys see some beautiful people out there, don't you? See some athletes, some Olympians, maybe some celebrities. So here's what I need you to do. Every table right now, I need you to look around your table and you need to identify one person. One person and we need that one person to stand up. It may be an athlete that is currently competing. It may be an Olympian. Somebody from each table, stand up right now because we're about to raise a ton of money for this amazing cause. There we go. You got to stay standing. You got to stay up. Stay up on your feet. One person from each table, stand up. We need one person. Come on, Ra come on, guys. One person stand up from each table. Stay standing. If you don't have somebody standing up from your table, identify that person. There we go. All right. Those of you standing, we need everybody standing up. You are going to be the auctioneers of our first auction item tonight. I know. It's going to be amazing. Now check this out. On the table right there, on the center 
of your table is a one-of-a-kind designed custom piece, six by nine USA swimming, a beautiful centerpiece. Now let me tell you about this centerpiece. It is autographed by Olympians Nathan Adrian, Rowdy Gaines, Ryan Murphy, Missy Franklin, Kesley Dalia, Chase Kalish, and Maya Dorado. And this is gonna be the first auction item tonight. Now hold on, shh. I see some tables back there. We need one person standing up. Now those of you standing, are you guys ready for your first live auction experience? All right. So I'm gonna give you a little warm up. A little warm up. Just repeat after me, it's super easy. Can I get $10, 20, 30, 40, 40, 40, 40, 50, 50, 60, you guys got it? It's easy. You have a minute and a half. Talk to your audience and talk to your table. Start selling that live auction item. But hold on. The winner, the table that sells it for the most is gonna win this autograph swim cap. Come on up. There we go. Here it goes. Auction them off. There we go, we hear it, we hear you going. We got 20 right here, 30, 40, $50 is bid. Now we're looking for 60, come on. 15, 15, 15, anybody want 15, 15 here? 15, we got 10 the lady in blue, 15, here we go, 15. Oh, look at all the money being raised right now. We got 25, we're at $500 over here. We're looking for six. Come on Olympians, we got this. Oh, up on the table, this looks so good. $100, $300 right there. You got 200, let's keep it going. Here we go, we got 45 seconds, auctioneers. 45 seconds, start wrapping it up. There we go, somebody's gonna take this piece home. Tonight, we have, everybody's competitive. Who's gonna sell it for the most? There we go, keep it going. We hear 150, 200, $300 over there. Listen to all this money being raised tonight. Oh yes, oh yes, wrap it up. Here we go, you got 15 seconds to sell your piece tonight. 15 seconds left. 10, oh, she's got it over there. Seven, six, five. Come on, auctioneers, pull that money out. All the lives you're saving tonight. Four, three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause? for all of our celebrity auctioneers tonight. Now I need you auctioneers to remain standing. Shout, who think they stole their piece for the most? Did anybody sell it for $200? How much you got over here? 200, how much you sell? 250, what'd you guys sell yours for? $500, anybody beat 500 right here? What'd you go for? 840, 840 over there. Anybody go over 840? Anybody over $840? Ladies and gentlemen, where's our winner over here? Who's our $840 winner? Who won? Who's our winner over here? Right here. So check this out. Because of your amazing generosity, you are getting this autographed swim cap by all these Olympians. Michael Phelps, Rowdy Gaines. Ladies and gentlemen, here's what I need you to do. If you won, your piece, grab a pin, fill out the form on that's glued to the centerpiece, fill it out, volunteers will come around and pick those up for you tonight. But that was fun. All right, shh, I know, so exciting. Here we go, we only have two more auction items tonight. Two amazing, shh, VIP experiences. Ladies and gentlemen, our next auction item for bid this evening, January 26, 2020. You and your special guests are going to head right across the street to Staples Center for the 62nd Annual Grammy Awards show hosted by Miss Alicia Keys. But hold on. That's just where it starts. Shh. We're throwing in two gold level seat tickets. You will have amazing seats. You are getting tickets to the VIP Grammys after party, and you are getting a red carpet pre-event experience for your Grammys extravaganza. But hold on, this package gets better. So you're going to the Grammys, getting the tickets, red carpet, VIP party. 
To make this extra special for you music lovers, we're throwing in a tour of Warner Music Group's archive facility, which is private and you cannot get into it. You will be led by one of WMG's archivists who will give you a behind the scenes tour and access to a world closed to the general public and seen by very few outside the music business this facility in Burbank houses some of the most important recordings and items in popular music, including master tapes and other materials from artists like Green Day, Led Zeppelin, John Coltrane, The Doors, Fleetwood Mac, Queen, all of the best musicians. Your experience will be customized to your music liking, and we're going to throw in a special memorabilia piece to conclude your tour. It's gonna to be amazing. So this is all one live auction item, I know. So you're going to the Grammys, VIP experience, you're getting the tour at Warner Brothers to see all the archives, all the great music tradition. This is priceless. Let's open up the bid for our first auction item tonight at $500 for this amazing experience. $500,000, $15,000, $2,000 right there. We're looking for $2,500. We have $2,000 in the front, looking for just $2,500. She's in at $2,500. How about $3,000? What do you think? We have $2,500 right here as bid, looking for just $3,000 thousand dollars for this once in a lifetime experience we have twenty five hundred dollars right here three thousand dollars thirty five four thousand dollars we see you back there how about forty five we have four thousand dollars over here in the corner looking for just forty five hundred dollars he's back at forty five let's go five thousand i know alicia keys at the grammys it'll be so amazing we have forty five hundred dollars right here we're looking for just five thousand dollars she's thinking she wants to go we have five thousand she's in at five thousand let's go fifty five Sir, what do you think? 5,500, they're in. How about 6,000? We have 5,500 dollars right here. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. On. Shh, dude. You are looking good tonight, by the way. I mean, you, I know, and she's looking gorgeous. She wants to go to the Grammys. Let's do it. We got 5,500. We're looking for six thousand dollars. I know. It's only money. It'll be great. What do you think? He says yes. Six thousand. Six thousand dollars. They're back right there. Let's go. Sixty-five hundred. We have six thousand dollars as bid. Looking for just sixty-five hundred dollars. They're thinking about it. Come on, table twenty-six. Let's go. My uh, 6,500. Now we're looking for 7,000. We have 6,500 right here. Looking for just 7,000 dollars for the Grammys experience. They're pointing back here. 7,000. I know. 7,000 right here. We have 6,500. 7,000. 7,000 dollars is bid. Let's go 75. We have 7,000 over here. Looking for just 7,500. She comes back at 75. Now we're looking for 8,000. 8,000 dollars. They're in. <sighs> I love your dress, by the way. You are looking fabulous tonight. I know. Would you like to go $9,000? She's thinking it'll be so much fun. I know. She says yes. $9,000. Let's go 95. We have 9,000 right here. We're looking for just $9,500. The Grammys with the Warner Brothers music. What do you think? We have 9,000. 9,500. They're back in. I know. They're trying to steal your fun. Would you guys like to go 10,000? We have 9,500. We're looking for $10,000. What do you think? Best tour ever. She says yes, they're in at 10,000. Can you believe that? I know. We have 10,000. She's waving me off. Are you sure? We take Visa, MasterCard, American Express. We can charge it, write it off. It's like free. We have 10,000. We're looking for 10,000. $500. We have $10,000 right here looking for 10.5 going once. 10.5 right here. No bidder. What? Who is that guy? I know. Would you guys like to go 11,000? We have 10.5 right here. We're looking for just $11,000. What do you think? One more time. Oh, dude. Hold on. Did you guys see this suit? This is freaking awesome. I love it. Sorry. I mean, I'm picturing you this in the Grammys, red carpet. They're going to put the cameras on you. I know. They're back at $11,000. Let's go 11.5. We have 11,000. I know. I don't know what they're doing over there. Would you like to go 11.5? I. Pff, he'll go with you. 11.5, they're back in. 
Let's go, 12,000. We have 11,500. We're looking for just $12,000 for the Grammys. What do you think? We have 11,500 right here looking for, you guys can all come. What do you think, 12,000? We have 11,500 looking for $12,000. You are a fast swimmer. I saw you in that pool. You must have swam today. Look at those guns. I love them. To have seats back at $12,000. 125? 12,500? She went 12, I know. That's it. 125. He says yes at 125. Let's go 13. We have 125 right here. We're looking for just $13,000. They're thinking, they're looking at the bid cards. What do you guys say? We have 125 right here looking for just $13,000. We got to go. I know, it's them over there. We have 125 right here going once, looking for just 13000 Twelve five going twice, looking for thirteen thousand dollars. Twelve five going three times. You're going to the Grammys, baby. Sold right here. Twelve thousand five hundred dollars. Dude, that was awesome. All right. We only have one auction item left, that's it. That was great, let's do that again. But I have a celebrity guest auctioneer tonight that's gonna come up and help describe this experience because I cannot do it justice. You guys know him as Gold Metal Mel. Let's put our hands together for Mr. Mel Stewart. Come on up, Mel. Where are we going next? Look at that. All right, I need to take a breath here. This mic is mine? It's yours. No, it's not. I can't do this. You got this. I'm the, I, are you kidding me? This, if, I got notes from you. If this is like longer than a tweet, it's like one ear and out the other. I think we should have closed with a Grammy offer. We can reverse it. Okay, we're, no. All right, all right. This is the uh, 2020 U.S. Olympic Trials two-day VIP experience. The Grammys has nothing on the U.S. Olympic trials experience. And it's only money. You can spend it all. <laughs> what is it, Mike? I don't know. It's only money. It's only money, exactly. All right, all right, here we go. Here's the experience. Pass the tweet. I'm looking at your notes. He said this is the great, greatest event on American soil. No, greatest event in the world. Greatest event in the world. I've been to the Olympic Games. I'm not saying it's garbage, but it's a little bit formal. It's a little bit tight. You go to trials, it's Hollywood, it's swank. Mike Ungers has got his fingers all over it. He, rowdy gains, they make this thing happen, they're pros, right? So this VIP experience is for the final two days. For insiders, you're gonna know this. Uh, it is full VIP, you're gonna stay at the Omaha Hilton, you're gonna be walking across the Sky Bridge, none of the heat, all comfort, cozy, just for you. USA Swimming promises VIP tickets, that means I think you can count on them. Where's Tim? Tim Hinchy. Tim? Yes? Tim Hinchy Suite. Oh my goodness, this just got better. Dude, you're in the skybox. You're in the suite with Mr. Hinchy himself. And I think this, there's, there's fine, there should be fine print. If, if there's not fine print in this offering, I think it can be said that for all eternity, Rowdy Gaines will know your name, and if he sees you, he's gonna act like you're his best friend. Right? Right? You can, I think that we can count on that. Can't we count on that? All right. That's what he does with me. He's pretending. VIP package. Oh my God, there's more. Okay, uh, we, so on Sunday, you, you get a swim in the pool. There's, this room is full of swim nerds. Swim in the pool. Dude, I'm telling you, if you swim in this pool, I'm not, I, I can't guarantee it again. This, you have to read the fine print, but I think that it, like, it makes you faster. <laughs> it does. Slims you down. If you're a little bit old, you're middle-aged, maybe you've got enough of a pocketbook to do this thing, you're probably going to appreciate it because you, you're going to lose about 10 pounds. That's, that's pretty good. It's nice. And I, I, I think, oh, we, oh we, no, we have the, uh, the luncheon, and that's before. We have uh, hospitality before finals. Uh, 
this is the last two days of the event, so you're going to have special Olympians drop by. I think that means Simone Manuel, Caleb Dressel. Can't promise it, but probably means that. <laughs> Katie Ledecky, Regan, <laughs> Reagan Smith, excuse me. All right, here's the cherry on top. Are you ready? What was the bid for the last one? Oh, was I, I think you get that wrong. What was it? 11 was it 11.5? Was it higher than that? 12 it was 12.5. Yeah, you don't even know, buddy. You're on the next one. It's only money. <laughs> so it's, uh, this is the cherry on top. And this is here, this is, this is, it's the team processing experience. Everybody that's been on the national team knows this. There's this thing. If you're green, if you're a kid, it seemed like I was a kid. I was the youngest kid forever on the national team. But when you make the team, you're like, I'm going to represent Team USA, and it's going to be awesome, and yay. But people let you know there's the team processing experience, which means you get outfitted. And if it's the Olympic Games, you really get outfitted. I'm thinking retail value of the outfitting situation is higher than 12.5. That alone. There's some old Olympians in here who are like me. All of the Olympic gear from 30 years ago is gone. It's, no, we don't have it anymore. You can't get this at the Olympic store, by the way, the USOC store. This is, this is unique to Olympic team members. And if you get processed and outfitted, you don't even have to race. You're basically on the Olympic team. <laughs> right? That's priceless. That, that, excuse me. That's priceless. <laughs> but it's only money. Okay, I can't do this whole auctioneer thing. Can you, go, can you do it from here? Yeah, you can't. Are you kidding me? All right. What's our first bid? Are you kidding me? All right, what's our first bid? $1,000. $1,000. Anyone? $1,000. Right here, we got $1,000. $1,000. Table 26. We need $1,500. $1,500. $1,500. $1,500. Table 27. $1,500. Do I, is it that bad? Am I doing that badly? It's only money. It's only money. There we go. We got 1500 right here. We're looking for two. Put your hands together right there for Mr. Mel. Thank you, Mel. We have 1500 Priceless experience, guys. $2,000. $2,000 is bid right there. Let's go $2,500. We have $2,000 right here. Looking for $25. She's back at $25. $3,000. How about $3,500? $3,500 is back. Now we're looking for $4,000. We have $3,500 right here. Looking for just $4,000 for this amazing experience. $4,000. They're in. Let's go. 45. I know. We have 4,000 right here. We're looking for just $4,500. $4,500. She's back in. Let's go. Five grand. We have four. I know this is so much better than the Grammys. This will be really once in a lifetime experience. What do you think? We have $4,500 right here. $5,000 there. Back in. Let's go. 55. We have $5,000 right here. Looking for just 55. He's back at 55. Now we're looking for 6,000. We have $5,500 right here. Looking for just $6,000. $6,000. She's back. You guys can clap. I know. Dude, I love your tie, by the way. Look at those shoes. It looks so good. Would you like to get 65? He's back at 65. Now we're looking for $7,000. What do you think? We have 6,500. Looking for just $7,000. She wants to do it. It'll be so much fun. $7,000. She's back in. Let's go 75. Did you see her look at you when she bid? I know. We have 7,000 right there. We're looking for just $7,500. It'll be so much fun. Once in a lifetime experience. We have 7,000. $7,500 there back in. How about 8,000? We have $7,500 looking for just eight. Thousand dollars the VIP experience. What do you think? We have seventy five hundred dollars right here. Looking for eight thousand dollars. We have seventy five hundred dollars going once. Looking for just eight thousand. Seventy five hundred going twice. I know it's just eight thousand dollars. I know. I, you, dude, you're holding your paddle like you want to put it in the air. Eight thousand dollars. He's back. So close. I am the worst auctioneer ever. I should have sold this, but I have to say this. You look stunning tonight. Oh, my gosh. You're a lucky man. Very, very lucky. Would you like to 8500 I mean, imagine sitting with this guy next to your side at the pool. It'll be fantastic. And you did $8,500. I know. But, dude, we all know you just got out of a CrossFit workout. You are looking swole right now. Let's go 9,000, what do you think? We have 8,500, we're looking for 9,000 dollars. Your paddle's on your table, your wine is right there, take a drink, it'll be amazing. Yes, we have plenty of time. We have 8,500, looking for 9,000 dollars. What do you think, 8,500 dollars? Looking for, come on guys, we need some help. It's so quiet, 9,000 dollars, let's go. 
What do you think? 8,500, we're looking for 9,000. He's going, he's raising, it'll be amazing. Let's put your pedal and listen to the cheers. When no, he put it down. Oh, we have $8,500 right here looking for 9,000 going once. 8,500 looking for just 9,000 going twice. No, who is that? What? 9,000 over there, I know. He's up in the front. Were you? That's not fair. 95, let's go 95. It'll be awesome. We have 9,000 right here. We're looking for just $9,500. What do you think? We have 9,000. She comes back at 95. Let's go $10,000. We have 95 right there. I love, I love the handkerchief too and the glasses. It's working. It's amazing. 10,000, what do you think? We have 95, we're looking for $10,000. We gotta go, we got lots of awards to give out. We have 9,500 looking for 10. Okay, 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 you ready? Oh yeah, hold on guys, we're waiting for the drama. $9,500 going once. $10,000 there back in. I know, we have 10,000, how about 10, five? What do you think? She's looking at me. She's not sure. I know. Put the bid paddle in the hand. Raise it up. 10-5. Ten, 10-5. Five. Ten, five, they're back in. Let's go 11,000. Here we go. Let's do it again. Are you ready? 11,000 going once. 11,000. Looking for 11-5? I know it's it. 11,000 going twice. 11-5 right there. 12,000. What do you think? We have 11,000. 11.5, looking for $12,000. They're shaking me off. Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, this is so weird. Yes, Rowdy's talking to me in my ear. I know. I do love his chiseled jawline. It's pretty amazing. Sorry. <laughs> I had to say that. I, I know. I know, Rowdy. Yes, yes. I, it is an amazing event. I know everybody needs to win. Okay. Okay, I'll ask. So Rowdy said, if you guys would be so kind to match their bid at 11.5. We'll sell two. You guys go, they go. I know it's so much money. They say yes, sold here at 11.5. You're going, sir, sold there at $11,500. Put your hands together. You won, you won. Thank you so much. That's $23,000. How about a round of applause for all of our live auction winners? Thank you guys for your generosity. You're the best. Now it's back to the show. Great stuff. Thanks, bro. Ho, ho, ho. Hello again, everyone. How's that been doing? Got some tickets in your pockets? That was a lot of money to me. That was, <laughs> that was a lot of money. I was like, I have like 12 bucks. No? Okay. How's that? They had rapid fire bidding. Real fun. Is that, is that Lenny Kraselberg right there? You look amazing. I didn't think it was you. You look like 30. Lenny Kraselberg, everyone. Aging like Rob Lowe, good stuff. <laughs> a little starstruck, oh boy. This is exciting, Who's, who lives in Los Angeles here in the audience tonight? Oh great, that's a good video. I used to live here, I live in New York City now. Right with, uh, with Laura, we have a, a tiny apartment crowded up by all of her trophies. There's no room for my stuff. It's wonderful, New York City's expensive. People complain about high rent in New York City. I like it, I think it's, I think it's nice because I've realized nothing makes you more conflict averse as a couple than when both of you know that neither of you could afford that place alone. Like that's what I've figured out. We just signed for two more years. If she came home tonight and was like, Matthew, I'm cheating on you. I'd be like, hey, let's talk about it. You know, like what's up? We all make mistakes. The important question is what's his name and how soon can he move in? Like that's what I want to know. <laughs> I'm socially monogamous but fiscally polyamorous. You know, I could swing it. I could make it work. And it's good, and we are, we've been dating for almost four years. We wanna get married, we wanna have kids, we wanna do all that. But the next step for us is we wanna get a dog. Like, that's a big thing, but we don't agree on what to name the dog. Because Laura wants to give it like a, like a people name. You know when dogs have like person names? I don't like that, I think it's weird. And I'll explain why. Uh, imagine residential neighborhood, nighttime sidewalk, scenario one. Oski, Oski, come here Oski boy. Scenario two. Jonathan! <laughs> Where's my Jonathan? <laughs> Neighbors running up like, sir, you need to put some clothes on. We need you to, <laughs> you can't dress like this. It's nice, we used to have roommates, it was a cool thing. Having roommates, it was four of us. 
And uh, one time, we were, it was me and my girlfriend, Laura, our friend Harry, our roommate Harry, and his boyfriend, we were watching Queer Eye on Netflix. And I don't know if you've seen it, it's a great show. Got through a couple episodes and I expressed that to the group. I was like, I like this show. I like this show because it's not just very entertaining, it's also very progressive. And my girlfriend goes, no, no it's not. I said, what? She goes, this show is just men taking the advice that women were already giving them for years. <laughs> they only listen when they hear it from another man. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 I disagree. I don't, I don't think that's true. And then Harry chimes in. He says, actually, Matthew, there have been numerous studies showing that men are more likely to dismiss ideas when they hear them from women. And I said, Harry, that, that is a great point. That is a really solid point. Thank you, Harold. I was blind, but now I see. <laughs> and then Laura said something. All right. <laughs> Back to the awards, all right. To present the Golden Goggles for the Breakout Swimmer of the Year, as a 16-year-old at the 2000 Games in Sydney, she stroked to gold in the 100 breaststroke. Joining her, a four-time Olympian who delivered her breakout performance as a teddy bear-hugging 14-year-old at the 1996 Atlanta Games. Ladies and gentlemen, a pair of breaststroke icons, please welcome three-time Olympic medalist Megan Kwan Jendrick and seven-time Olympic medalist Amanda Beard. Amanda, we were both fortunate to win some pretty big races in our time, but I don't think there's anything quite like that first breakout swim, when you realize you can handle the pressure and succeed on any stage. That's a pretty priceless moment. The confidence you gain from those swims, it can really set the tone for the rest of your career. After their performances in 2019, I think the futures of these four nominees are looking bright indeed. Our first nominee is former Georgia Bulldog, Haley Flickener. Already an Olympian and longtime member of the national team, this was the year that Flickener broke through to the podium with silver in the 200 butterfly. Your next nominee, Jay Litherland, also hails from the University of Georgia. He too is an Olympian and perennial member of the national team. But at World Champs, he reached first, his first major international podium with the silver in the 400 IM. Our third nominee is 23-year-old Hannah Moore, who, was, who has been an open water specialist for just one year now. In the 5K in South Korea, she raced to a tie for bronze. And your final nominee is 17-year-old Regan Smith. She may have entered the world champs a relative unknown, but she emerged a world record holder, breaking the world record in the 100 and 200 backstroke. Okay, so we got Haley Flickener, Jay Litherland, Hannah Moore, and Reagan Smith, your nominees for the 2019 Breakout Swimmer of the Year. Haley Flickener notched her first career individual world championships medal in South Korea, earning a silver in the 200 butterfly. To the wall! Flickener with a silver. Uh, get in. After four years on the national team, Jay Litherland won his first career international medal in the 400 IM in Gwangju. Jay Litherland is gaining on Diaceto. What a gutsy performance by this young man. In her first international meet in open water, Hannah Moore earned a gutsy bronze medal finish in the 5K in South Korea. Here we come into the finish. Third is Hannah Moore of the USA. 17-year-old Reagan Smith broke out in a huge way with two gold medals in Guangzhou and a remarkable three world records. Oh, get in. Reagan Smith blows away the field in the women's 200 back. All right, and the breakout swimmer of the year is Reagan Smith. Reagan Smith pulls away the field in the women's 200 back. Hello 
again. Um, I really want to start off again by just thanking my coach, Mike Prado, and my parents. Just they, they do so much for me, and I really wouldn't be standing up here without them in my life. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate you so much. Um, I, I feel like I really just learned so much this past summer. I feel like before this summer, I was really just a little kid who had no idea what was going on in swimming. I was just super wide-eyed, just not really knowing what was going on, just kind of enjoying the ride, and I still am. But I feel like after this summer, I, I really have a new perspective in swimming, and I, I'm just so excited to you know, continue out this year and continue, continue to put my head down in training and just get ready for next summer. And I'm really excited to see what I can do. So thank you guys so much. Quite a night already for Reagan Smith taking home her second award of the evening. Let's hear it for her again one more time. <laughs> On deck, the Golden Goggles for Perseverance to present the first ever winner of this award way back at the inaugural gala in New York City in 2004. Accompanying her, a sports and entertainment executive who's an eponymous media group, eponymous. It's eponymous, that's, a, that's an SAT word right there. Eponymous Media Group represents some of the biggest names in sports. Ladies and gentlemen, four-time Olympic medalist, Caitlin Sandino, and the president of the Los Angeles Olympic Organizing Committee, Casey Wasserman. <laughs> This is obviously an award that is very close to my heart. 16 years ago, after the Athens Games, I was so grateful to receive this award, this honor, at USA Swimming's first ever Golden Goggles. It's become quite a tradition since then. That deserves an applause. Oh, thank you. I just feel really old, that's it. <laughs> And after all it took to bring the Olympics back to Los Angeles in 2028, I have to say the Perseverance Award has particular resonance for me as well. Our first nominee this year is 30-year-old veteran Nathan Adrian. <laughs> Less than a year after a battle with cancer, Nathan was back, anchoring an American relay to gold. Your next nominee is 20-year-old Katie Ledecky. Since the 2012 London Games, Ledecky has been synonymous with dominance. Yet, fighting illness at the World Champs this year, we witnessed her resilience as she battled her way to gold in the 800 freestyle. Our third nominee is 30-year-old Ashley Twitchell. After just missing Olympic births in the 2012 and 2016 Olympic trials, Twitchell became one of the first members of the Team USA's 2020 Tokyo team, secured with a sixth place finish in the 10K open water race at the World Championships. Nathan Adrian, Katie Ledecky, and Ashley Twitchell, your nominees for the 2019 Perseverance Award. We back, we back, we back in the saddle, back on stage, making the whole place rattle. Back with the 18 train on the track. Thought we were gone, but you're wrong. Now it's on. We back. Just seven months removed from cancer surgery, Nathan Adrian made an amazing comeback, returning to the pool in time to win gold for Team USA in South Korea. And here comes the greatest American sprinter in history. Nathan Adrian finding something in the U.S. takes gold. Katie Ledecky weathered an illness at the World Championships and bounced back to earn a gritty gold medal in the women's 800-meter freestyle. But look at Ledecky explode off the wall! There she goes! Oh, oh. I'm not feeling well, but I'm still Katie Ledecky where the heart of a champion gets it done. 30-year-old Ashley Twitchell qualified for her first Olympic Games by finishing in the top 10 in the open water 10K in South Korea. Ashley Twitchell with a strong showing here in four. It's been a long journey, but an awesome journey. And uh, the best part was celebrating with my parents and my husband who were, who were there and Yasu watching. And the winner is Nathan Adrian. Nathan Adrian finding.
something, something, and the U.S. takes gold. Matthew, in your intro, you made fun of the guy with cancer. Take some serious cojones. <laughs> more, than, more than I've got, at least. Anyways, you, uh, you get me in front of a, a, a microphone, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shout at you two things. One of them, get your kids in swim lessons, right? Of course, you already heard about that. Um, number two, if you look closely at this screen, this 15-foot screen, you might notice a little something on my upper lip. Um, this is a mustache. Um, and it's a reminder to, uh, to men out there uh, who actually, on average, live almost eight years uh, less life than, than women. Um, and one of the contributing factors to that is because they don't go see the doctor uh, when they first notice something is wrong. Um, so to all you men out there, go see the doctor. To all, your, to all the wives of those wonderful men out there, make the appointment and put it on his calendar. <laughs> um, so anyways, I mean, where would I be um, you know, without my team? And uh, I'm just going to take a quick moment to, to thank them. Um, to Hallie, my wonderful wife. Um, yeah, thank you. It was just about three months after, you know, we vowed to be with each other in sickness and in health, and uh, the sickness part came sooner than both of us ever anticipated. But, uh, you know, if, if, there was, if there was a book on how to, you know, respond to something like this in, in the perfect way and support and love your husband in every way that, you know, he needed it in, in his time of need, you, you killed it, <laughs> so, so thank you. Uh, to my mom and dad, of course. Um, you know, I, I, couldn't, I can't imagine um, what it's like to receive a, a phone call from, from your baby boy, the one who's you know, still swimming, who's still doing this thing that's supposed to be super healthy, eating green smoothies every day, um, taking care of his body, that he has cancer. Um, and, and to them, you know, the strength that they brought to me and, and them dropping everything immediately, being like, hey, okay, you know, is your guest room ready? <laughs> yes, it is, Mom, anytime. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that, it is what it is. So thank you, Mom. Thank you, Dad. A couple other thank, special thank yous. Um, you know, this is, this is kind of a random one, but um, to Christy, my physical therapist. Um, she took so much time out of her busy day to take care of me in my time of need again, and, um, and so much more than, than what it was from a physiological, um, you know, helping me try to get back on in, in my recovery and, and back into the pool and, and back to full strength. I think she probably knew deep down that, that more than anything I needed that emotional support, and she was you know, certainly there for me for that. Um, to Dave, um, <laughs> again, I come in for a team meeting, you're probably thinking uh, we're talking schedule or the next trip I have to take and the next practices I'm missing, but you know, it, it wasn't, but your response was, was still the same. And, uh, and that always is, um, what can I do to help? What can I do to support you? Thank you. Um, <laughs> lastly, of, of course, you know, where would you be without, without your teammates? Um, you know, specifically, Ryan, thank you for wearing my cap um, at, at the Pro Swim Series. I mean, that meant a lot to me. Um, it came at a time, you know, that I was, I was wanting to be there with you guys, and it felt like I was there. So, thank you all. Aloha, everybody. I'm Jason Momoa. I just wanted to say I'm sorry that I can't be there tonight, but I want to wish you a happy evening at the Golden Goggles and a special congratulations to all the honored athletes. I wish I could be there where it's a little bit warmer and, uh, and just to see you do what you do. I appreciate you. Aloha. Aquaman, y'all. Aquaman, shout out. Let's hear it for, let's hear it for a, a superhero. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you so much. Huge respect to Nathan, Adrian. Uh, amazing. One more time. Uh, it was such an unbelievable story. And he said my name. <laughs>
It's kind of a cool moment for me. Coming up, it's time for the Doc Councilman Coach of the Year Award. Here to present the Golden Goggles, the 1972 Olympic gold medalist in the 200 Butterfly. From 1978 to 1992, she was the head women's coach at the University of California and was the 1987 NCAA Division I Women's Coach of the Year. Joining her, one of the most decorated Olympians of all time, this former Stanford Cardinal won a staggering 81 medals in international competition across her career. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Olympic champion Karen Moe Humphreys and 12-time Olympic medalist Jenny Thompson. I just want to start by saying what a thrill it is for me to be here with this Stanford superstar, especially uh, because the results of yesterday's uh, Cal football victory in the big game. <laughs> but before we get to the nominees, I want to propose a toast to my colleagues from coaching and to all of the coaches in this room. Everyone, let's grab a glass and raise it for a toast to our coaches. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you, Karen, and thank you to all the coaches out there. We really don't get enough opportunities to say we appreciate you and we love you. Our first nominee for Coach of the Year is Jack Bowerly. He's been the head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs for over four decades. This year, he placed six swimmers on the World Championship team where they collected a total of seven medals. Our next nominee is the head coach of Indiana University, Ray Luz. Coach, <laughs> coach Luz has returned the Hoosiers to national prominence, and at the Worlds, his swimmers combined for 13 medals. Third, there's last year's Golden Goggles winner for Coach of the Year, Greg Meehan. This year, Meehan was Team USA's head women's coach at the World Champs, and he guided his Stanford women's team to their third straight NC2A championship. Our fourth nominee is my coach growing up, Mike Parado. Mike is now the head coach of Riptide Swimming in Minnesota, where he guided 17-year-old Reagan Smith to two world records this summer. And your, your final nominee is Greg Troy, a, <laughs> a two-time winner of this award. The Gator Swim Club coach is the man behind Caleb Dressel's stunning success. In South Korea, Dressel delivered an astonishing eight medals, the most ever in a single world championships. Jack Bowerly, Ray Luz, Greg Meehan, Mike Parado, and Greg Troy, your nominees for the 2019 Coach of the Year. How you doing? Hi, I'm Olivia Smaliga, and our first nominee for Coach of the Year is Jack Bowerly, a longtime coach at the University of Georgia. Jack placed six athletes on the world's team this year, and all of us medaled. The next nominee for Coach of the Year is my coach. And my coach. He was a coach on the World Championship staff this summer. And the head coach of Indiana University. Give it up for Ray Luz! Woo! I'm Reagan Smith, and your next nominee is Mike Prado. Mike has invested 40 plus years in making his swimmers the best that they can be. As one of our nation's top club coaches, Mike has prepared hundreds of swimmers for the rigors of college swimming. I've been fortunate enough to have him guiding me since I was 13 years old, and his extraordinary skills and knowledge have been so important in my success. Our next nominee is my coach, Greg Meehan, the head coach of Stanford University and of Team USA this summer. Greg placed five women on the World Championships team, and he led Stanford University to their third straight NCAA title this March. Introducing your final nominee for Coach of the Year, your 2012 Olympic team coach, my friend, mentor, and coach as well, otherwise known as Pappy, Coach Greg Troy. The Doc Councilman Coach of the Year is Mike, Mike Parado.
first thing I want to do is, um, you know, to be um, included with the, the coaches uh, that were just mentioned is amazing. And um, they're all my friends, and they're great coaches with great athletes. Um, I would have people would ask me um, sometimes about Jenny, and um, they'd ask me about Jenny with other swimmers and this and that, and I, I would say, well, there's, there's only one Jenny. Um, after this past year, um, with numerous world junior records and a couple of American records in the in the short course, and uh, certainly the world records at world championships, I know when everything's said and done that I'll certainly be able to say there's only one Reagan. Reagan, thank you very much. That's why I'm standing here. Thank you very much. Congratulations to Mike Ferrato. Let's hear for, for Mike. Up next, the Golden Goggles for Relay of the Year, an award that comes with a twist in World Championships years. In addition to the traditional men's and women's relay, there are also mixed events featuring two men and two women on each squad because these are the times we live in, folks. To present the greatest backstroker of his day at the 2000 Games in Sydney, this former USC Trojan delivered triple gold. Joining him, a beloved actor and friend of the Golden Goggles, best known for his work on the TV series Ally McBeal, Law and & Order, and Grey's Anatomy, ladies and gentlemen, four-time Olympic gold medalist Lenny Kraselberg, ow, ow. and Screen Actors Guild Award winner Greg Gurman. Relays were always my favorite part of any international competition. Uh, they're about being a uh, part of something bigger than yourself. Actually, that was your line, <laughs> but I like to say more than the swimmers do because it's what I do for a living. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's like being part of a great cast because it relays allow you to feed off the collective energy. Actually, I've never seen in a swimming relay, how do you pass a baton? Uh, I've it's never all seen, underwater. Come on. I can't see that. When it all comes together, special things can happen. At the World Championships this summer in South Korea, we witnessed three American relays that did just that. The first nominee is the women's 4x100 medley relay. Beginning with an all-time leadoff leg, the quartet of Reagan Smith, Lily King, Kelsey Dahlia, and Simone Manuel shattered the world record by over a second on their way to gold. Our second nominee is the mixed 4x100 freestyle relay featuring Caleb Dressel, <laughs> Zach Apple, Mallory Comerford, and Simone Manuel. Those four also combined for a gold in a world record time. The final nominee is the men's 4x100 freestyle relay comprised of Caleb Dressel, Blake Peroni, Zach Apple, and Nathan Adrian. The American men delivered an inspired gold medal performance setting a world championships record. Quartet of Reagan Smith, Lily King, Kelsey Dahlia, and Simone Manuel dominated the medley relay by over three seconds and set a world record. Oh, yes! A U.S. women and Simone Manuel world record swim. Caleb Dressel, Zach Apple, Mallory Comerford, and Simone Manuel outdueled the Australians in the mixed free relay to take gold and set a world record. Holding off Bronte Campbell, getting to the wall, it'll be the United States and Simone Manuel with a new world record. The American men's sprint freestyle relay of Caleb Dressel, Blake Peroni, Zach Apple, and Nathan Adrian earned gold at the World Championships. Nathan Adrian finding something and the U.S. takes gold. And the winner is Women's 4x100 medley relay. Oh, yes! A U.S. women with a final statement here in South Korea. Gold medal, world record swim for the United States.
congrats, ladies. Um, you know, I'm going to just, I don't want to be a downer, but um, we had a rough start to the meet. And it was kind of, it was hard to get back into the groove. But um, I think the resilience and the grittiness of this team helped us in the meet with one of the greatest relays that's ever happened. Um, so thank you to all of our teammates. Um, we couldn't be here without you. Uh, also, thank you to my little squirt over here. It's really easy to swim fast when you're already three seconds ahead off the first leg, so <laughs> thanks. <laughs> yeah, um, first off, I would like to give Reagan a high five. I know that many people have commented on me missing it after the race, so here you go. <laughs> um, but I definitely agree with what Lily has stated, um, but also just a huge thank you to our prelim swimmers. We wouldn't be able to do what we did in finals if it wasn't for you all. So I would love if we could have Olivia, no. Melanie, Katie. Katie, and Mallory stand up and receive an applause. <laughs> This relay, I feel like I use the word fun a lot, but like this relay was the most fun I think I've ever had like at a meet in my entire life. I was so nervous and I just remember so well the one thing that made me feel less nervous and like way more confident was when Lily and I were dancing to Old Town Road in the team room before we went behind <laughs> to the ready room. I, it just it calmed my nerves so much and that is my biggest memory from that race and I just want to say thanks to Lily and of course thanks to Simone and Kelsey for just oh, helping me feel sane. These veterans just, they, they got me through that race and I just, I'm so thankful for them and oh, it was such a great race. <laughs> Um, these guys did it all. I'm just glad I didn't mess it up. So uh, we had a fun time, and it's an honor to be with these girls, and I'm really proud of them, and I'm excited to see the future of this relay. So. Just two more to go, everyone. Just two left. <laughs> The most prestigious golden goggles of them all. And really, what would you rather have? A gold medal, a, a shiny disc about the size of a small pancake, or a gilded pair of goggles? Seems like an easy call to me. <laughs> to present the award for Male Athlete of the Year, she was the Ledecky, Katie Ledecky of her time, in 1968. At the age of 16, she swept the 200, the 400, and the 800 freestyles at the Mexico City Games. Alongside her, a versatile sportscaster who has called a wide range of world-class events, the 2020 Tokyo Games will mark his 12th Olympics with NBC. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome three-time Olympic champion Debbie Meyer and two-time Emmy Award winner Ted Robinson. All right. They're off. <laughs> I've been waiting for half an hour to do that. <laughs> you know, bare feet all my life, I'm not putting them on now. So, um, I just right. want to say one thing. Katie and everybody else that swims distance freestyle, I'm really jealous of you for Tokyo 2020. I wanted a 1500. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So now, right. now we'll get to some real suspense. Yeah, I know you get tipped off a little bit to this early, and uh, look, we understand that I'm supposed to say no one is going to see this coming. <laughs> <laughs> do, they, do they really need us to call a one-horse race? Well, no, probably not, Debbie, but look, first of all, it gives me the chance to stand next to truly one of the greats of the sport. No, and no, no, no yes. thank you, no. <laughs> and, uh, and look, the achievements of our friend from Green Cove, truly bear repeating. <laughs> For the first time in Golden Goggle history, we have a category with just not three, not two, but one nominee. Hence, the winner has already been declared. And you know his name, Caleb Dressel, and what he did this summer at the World Championships in South Korea has never been done. An unprecedented eight medals in a single championships, not to mention breaking one of the most iconic 
records of all, Michael Phelps, world mark in the 100-meter butterfly. And it is well worth taking a look. Caleb Dressel wins it. Another American record for Dressel. Dressel is going to outlast him. No doubt about it again. And Caleb Dressel is on a roll. 53 world title and sets a new American mark as well. Caleb Dressel was dominant at the World Championships, earning six gold and two silver medals and being named the male swimmer of the competition. Holding off Bronte Campbell, getting to the wall, it'll be the United States with a new world record. The only swimmer to ever win eight medals at a single World Championships. My think, cats don't look anything like that. <laughs> I, think, I think in this town they call that a sizzle reel, don't yeah, they? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, do I really need they, to They read got it? it right. They got it right. Caleb Dressel, come on up. Dressel trying to hang on. Here comes Chalmers below him, but Dressel is going to outlast him. I just need to clear something up. I, I did not win eight medals at World Championships. I won four. I have the fastest relay swimmers in the world swimming next to me, and you expect me to take credit for that? Absolutely not. I'm 25% of that race. I, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm spoiled rotten with the relay members I have. Um, I don't ever want to take that for granted, the morning swimmers. Simone, that was a very nice gesture, getting the morning swimmers up there um, for their applause. But I want to give a couple of thank yous. Um, Troy, I mentioned you in the first one. Again, it was not, not an easy year by any means, but you know, you're starting to figure me out better and better each year. And we're just, we're just getting started, I feel like, as a um, swimmer and coach. Um, Erica, my agent, who had to leave early, if you've ever been on the opposite negotiating, negotiating end with her, I'm so sorry. Um, she's good at what she does, though. Um, Speedo. Not only for taking care of me, but my family. Um, you told me that from the start. It wasn't just going to be me. You're going to treat it like a family. And that's exactly what it's been. It's not just designing a suit for me. It's making sure everybody's taken care of when I get to go take care of business across, um, across the water. So um, my mom and my dad, all the way across the room, we got to fix that next year. USA Swimming, please. <laughs> I love my parents. Um, just thank you for being a part of my journey. You know. I don't want to cry up here. I'm a grown man. I can do this. Um, but my mom and dad, you've just been with me through so much. And it's just so hilarious that some little kid who was playing soccer or football would be standing on top of the world for swimming, of all things. So, <laughs> ah, I got this. So thank you all so much. I'll end it with a quote from one of the smartest men I know, my dad. No matter what your profession is, no matter what it is you do, make sure you enjoy it. Make sure you're good at it and try and be the best in the world at it. Mine just happens to be swimming. Boom! Let's hear it one more time for Caleb Dressel, everybody. I was, I was really hoping when they called this name they'd accidentally say La La Land. That would be, that'd be fun for me. What a, I really like him. He seems like a really cool guy. I also like that he was like, I didn't win eight world medals. I won four world medals. Like, we're all like, like Psh, big deal, right? <laughs> what a good guy. I, I can't wait to see what's in store for, uh, for, for next summer in Tokyo. And now to present our final award of the evening, before Michael Phelps and Caleb Dressel came along, it was his name, the number seven and the coolest mustache ever, that was synonymous with swimming greatness. Joining him to present the Female Athlete of the Year, the youngest player ever to be inducted into the Na International Tennis Hall of Fame, a former world number one who won 30 singles titles and five doubles titles in her career on the court. Please welcome nine-time Olympic champion Mark Spitz and two-time US Open champion Tracy Austin.
You know, Tracy, I've uh, known you uh, for about 30 years. Oh, don't tell anybody that. <laughs> and uh, I want to say that it's, I started out with the golden goggles. I was almost said Freudian slip, a gold, I already got the Golden Globe Awards, but um, I'm really happy to be back here and to see a lot of the people that I've watched on TV take the baton and do such a great job of being well accomplished. Uh, I, I got very lucky uh, in the draw of my table. I was with Reagan's parents and, and Caleb's parents, and between all those gold medals and my gold medals uh, and, and world records over there, I, we were going to actually enter the Olympics in Tokyo as a country <laughs> <laughs> if, if they'll still give me my, my uh, world records back. Uh, but again, it's, it's really a pleasure to be here. Um, you know, it's about 243 days, and that's how long it'll be before the opening ceremonies in 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games, July 24th next summer, exactly eight months from now. You know, Mark, I have a feeling that so many of those assembled in this room already knew that because this audience, they know how to keep their eye on the clock. <laughs> well, after tonight, there'll be uh, no more looking back, only uh, looking forward to those games, and um, hopefully we'll We'll see you all make the team. Yeah, I bet these four nominees will be there in Tokyo, racing for the top of the Olympic podium. Your first nominee for Female Athlete of the Year is Lily King. And uh, as, as, a, as a fellow Hoosier, I appreciate someone who speaks out her mind, and that she definitely does. Uh, and I'm a great fan. In uh, 2019, King delivered a triple gold medal performance at the World Championships and wrapped up a stunning career at Indiana University. And the next nominee is Katie Ledecky. Despite fighting illness at the World Championships, Ledecky left no question in 2019 that she remains the class of the world in women's freestyle. <laughs> uh, our third nominee uh, might be the most clutch swimmer alive. 20 That's a lot. That <laughs> says a lot. 23-year-old <laughs> Simone Manuel. He sprinted to seven medals at the uh, World Championships, including individual gold in the 50 and 100 freestyle events. And then the final nominee is only 17 oh, years old. I think you've met her many times already up here on the stage. It's Reagan Smith, already the winner of three golden goggles this evening. Her, goal, her double world record performance at the World Championships established her as the next great American backstroker. Well, there you have it. Lily King, Katie Ledecky, Simone Manuel, and Reagan Smith, the nominees for 2019 Female Athlete of the Year. Big hand. Lily King picked up three gold and one silver medal this summer and also completed a career sweep of the 100 and 200 breaststroke at the NCAA Championships. And Lily King is going to do it again. Katie Ledecky won the 800 freestyle for an amazing eighth straight summer and now has 18 career medals at the FINA World Championships, 15 gold and three silver. This woman can turn it on when she needs to. Katie Ledecky is on her way to her fourth 800 free title in a row. Simone Manuel became the first woman in history to win seven medals at a World Championships with a dominating four gold and three silver medal performance in Guangzhou. Five different swimmers have a chance as they come to the wall. It's Manuel once again coming up big. Fastest woman in the world, you bet. 17-year-old Reagan Smith wrapped a number of sparkling performances into a three-day period at the World Championships, winning two gold medals and setting three world records. Reagan Smith blows away the field in the women's 200 back. Woo! Lily King sweeps the 100 and the 50s for the last two world championships. That is a champion in every single sense of the word. Four golds, three silvers for Simone Manuel. This is the new star. I was definitely in shock. I never thought I'd be able to go something like that, so it's just like an unreal feeling. Okay, as an outsider, it certainly seems like all four deserve it. 
But the winner for the Female Athlete of the Year is Simone Manuel. This is unbelievable. Smith is going to shatter Missy Franklin's mark. Yeah. If only I could swim up here. Um, <laughs> uh, first off, I want to say congrats to the other nominees. All of those women had amazing performances this year. I also want to say thank you to USA Swimming and USA Swimming Foundation for putting on this amazing event and supporting all of us athletes and supporting so many amazing initiatives. Um, it really takes a village to get up to this stage and get to this point. And first off, I want to thank my family. I want to thank my mom and my dad. One of my brothers is here, Ryan, thank you for being here. And their support is so unwavering and they love me through it all, the good, the bad, the ugly. And I wouldn't be the person or the swimmer that I am today without you all. I would like to thank my coaches, Greg, Mian, and Tracy Dukoch for everything they do for me. They continue to support me on this journey and remind me to trust the process and just, me, just be me. They challenge me every day to be my very best. I'd also like to thank my sponsors, Tier, for supporting me on this journey as well. When I first started in swimming, it was pretty difficult for me. It still is difficult to this day, but oftentimes I didn't feel like I fit in or it was the sport for me. Oftentimes people question why I was swimming because I'm not supposed to swim, and that's really difficult, but to really, I never thought that I would see the day where I would stand up here and receive this award. What I've learned through this journey, even though it's been very hard, is to, tr is to follow your passion. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do anything. Work hard to all your dreams because anything is possible. Thank you. One more time for Simone Manuel, everybody. Let's hear it for the winner. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's our show. It has been a true pleasure to be your host tonight. Um, I, I, after the show, all of the national team members, I will take a selfie with every single one of you. Uh, on behalf of everyone at USA Swimming, thank you for joining us as we celebrate the very best of our sport. As we bid farewell, enjoy this final look back at the winners of the 2019 Golden Goggles Award. Good night, everyone. American sprinter in history. Nathan Adrian finding something in the U.S. takes gold. I wish I could swim like the dolphins, like dolphins can swim. Oh, yes, a U.S. women and Simone. woman in the world. You bet. Now yes. Kayla Dressel sets a new American mark as well.
Saturday.